All right, here we go with some proverbs. I'm just going to show you guys how I determine which proverb I'm going to read, and then um, I'm going to block off the camera. So while I read it, we can just focus on the word. So I have my little old little karopi. It says full service. Oh, it's like a gas station kind of thing, I guess. <laughs> So, um, this is like a little Hello Kitty, but Hello Kitty frog. That's what Karopi is. I used to work at a Hello Kitty store when I was going to, when I lived in Stockton, was going to college there. Sanrio, that was, that's the company that makes Hello Kitty and all those characters. So, inside the little box here. I have a little Mille Fiori, which means a million flowers, a little Mille Fiori, um, little glass square cabochon. And uh, so in here I have little pieces of paper numbered 1 through 31, I believe, however many proverbs there are. I believe there's 30 or 31. So I'm just going to pick one. Okay. I'm gonna just look to the side. Oops, I want you guys to see. Okay, I'm looking to the side. Okay, what message do you have for us today, God? What's the good word for this Easter Sunday? It is 31, <laughs> the last one, okay. So, and we're going to put those back because we're going to... Oh, one fell out. 18. So maybe God wants me to read both those. So, 18 and 31. All right, here we go. Proverbs 18, Proverbs 31. Okay. Okay. So let's just go in order. We'll do 18 first. Okay. Proverbs 18. A man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. He rages against all wise judgment. A fool has no delight in understanding, but in expressing his own heart. Meaning, he can express his own heart, but um, he has no delight in understanding. So, expressing your own truth, but not understanding universal truths. They have to be in alignment. When the wicked comes, contempt comes also. And with dishonor comes reproach. The words of a man's mouth are deep waters. The wellspring of wisdom is a flowing brook. Yeah. It is not good to show partially to the wicked or to overthrow the righteous in judgment. A fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth calls for blows. Meaning, meaning you're begging for it. So when you're in contention, when you're being disobedient to God, when you're rebelling against God, you're really asking for a whooping. That's how I'm interpreting that. A fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth calls for blows. A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. 
So Proverbs right here, Proverbs, good word, benediction. We have to be very careful, especially twin flames, master manifestors. Okay, we have to be careful what we're saying, how we're saying it. Who we're giving the energy of our words to. To whom, okay. So, 18.8. Uh, the words of a table bearer are like tasty trifles and they go down into the inmost body he who is slothful in his work is a brother to him who is a great destroyer so yeah like being lazy slothful not doing anything there's no neutrality or stagnation you're either for it or you're against it right so Oh, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not destroying anything. Well, you, you are by being slothful, not building. You are being destructive. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Yeah, yeah. The tower, the righteous run to it and are safe. Right? Because that's your rock. That's your foundation. That's your bones. That's your... Your salvation, your strength, your pillar of strength. The rich man's wealth is his strong city. And like a high wall in his own esteem. <sighs> Before destruction, the heart of a man is haughty. And before honor is humility. Right? We have to humb humble our ourselves. Um, and we find honor there. Because it's like strength and vulnerability. Being gracious and grateful. We have to humble ourselves before God. And that's where the honor is and the humility. And humility has to come first before true honor. He who answers a matter before he hears it, it is, it is folly and shame to him. So what, yeah, doctors do that a lot to me. They'll, I'll just get out a few words. And just, you know, people don't have good communication skills. And they are, you know, jumping the gun, assuming what you're going to say before they even actually let you say your piece. So, um, he who answers a matter before he hears it, it is folly and shame to him. The spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness, but who can bear a broken spirit? All right, we need to let the spirit guide us. And that's, that's God. It's eternal. It's perfect all the time. Our spirit. So, you know, our, our body is the one that can be fractured. Our spirit is whole and perfect and eternal. The heart of the prudent acquires knowledge and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. The first one to plead his cause seems right until his neighbor comes and examines him. Right, so we have to look at ourselves objectively as if we were someone else looking in casting lots causes contentions to cease and keeps the mighty apart casting lots causes contentions to cease and keeps the mighty apart
A brother offended is harder to win than a strong city, and contentions are like the bars of a castle. <laughs> yeah, because that those that grudge holding, you know. It's um uh, it's very limiting to the person who holds it. A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. From the produce of his lips he shall be filled. Notice that echo, that return, that boomerang, what the good intention that you put out in, onto the wind. It brings a message back of fruit <laughs> and fulfillness. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, right? This is the manifesting. And those who love it will eat its fruit. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. The poor man uses entreaties, but the rich answers roughly. So I don't know if that means like in spirit, you know, if you're poor in spirit, you're going to say things that are pleasing to other people. Because really that's just fear of rejection and all that stuff. But if you, if you know God's love, you don't need to fear that. You know, the rich, if you're rich in spirit, you just speak the truth. You know, and those who are triggered, let them be triggered. Everything happens for a reason. <clears throat> Excuse me. A man who has friends must himself be friendly. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. That's our soul family out here. So it just goes to 24? Okay, so. Yeah. A friend closer than a brother. Yeah. Jesus. So, now 31. All right. The word of King Lemuel. Le, oh, that's like Lemuria, kind of. The words of King Lemuel. The utterance which his mother taught him. Okay. What, my son, and what, son of my womb, and what, son of my vows, do not give your strength to women, nor your ways to that which destroys kings. Don't give your power away. Don't pedest, don't, that's idolatry. Do you idolatry? Idolatry. Like the dollar tree, you know? <laughs> no idolatry, no, no pedestalizing, um... God doesn't even want you to focus on praising and worshiping him. He wants you to, you know, live the righteous life because that's where the most joy is. Not that you won't be spiritually attacked and stuff, you probably, even more so when, right? The more righteous, the more attacks, the more you become uh, illuminated, the more the light shines on you, the more you attract the darkness, you know? Moth is attracted to the light. The moth follows the light. So, it is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes intoxicating drink. Lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the justice of all the afflicted. Give strong drink to him who is perishing, and wine to those who are bitter of heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty, and remember his misery no more. So 
So it's kind of saying like once you've reached a certain level, you don't need these 3D comforts, you know? Um, I like having an occasional glass of wine though. <laughs> um, you know, but I'm a newbie at the Bible, so, you know, I mean, I ace metaphysics, but, um, and then, oh, I'm, I'm reading from the New King James Version, in case anyone, uh, anybody wanted to know that, so, so, let's see, um, nine, okay, open your mouth for the speechless and the cause of all who are appointed to die, open your mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. So, you know, it's like, let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. It's like having mercy on someone, understanding that, um, you know, how, how hard life can be and not judging them for the things that they're doing to soothe themselves because it's so painful. Um, we need to dig a little bit deeper and see why people are doing what they're doing and, and work with that and um, examine that because this stuff is superficial, you know. But it's like having mercy on someone. Open your mouth for the speechless and the cause of all who are appointed to die. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. And this is the virtuous wife. It has little subhead, little bold print titles. At the, it's kind of like a children's Bible, so there's different little areas in here that they'll uh, focus on. Little children's lessons. So it's, it's, it's a neat Bible. It's the precious moments one. Which we all, is, yeah, interesting because the Hello Kitty store where I worked, the owner owned another Hello Kitty store at the other mall, and they had all, that's where they uh, had all the precious moments figurines, so, um, yeah, I just made that little connection. Anyway, let's focus here. Who can find a virtuous wife for her worth is far above rubies, the heart of her husband safely trusts her so he will have no lack of gain she does him good and not evil all the days of her life she seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands right she supports her man she doesn't drag him down she's not needy she's strong we're the feminine we're strong we're not needy codependent weaklings We're a team. In Twin Flames, we're a team. We're soul, we're soul family, we're a team. You know, and all the Twin Flames together as a collective, we're a team. And the Twin Flames themselves between the two. And yes, I'm talking about Twin Flames while I'm reading the Bible, because this is very strongly connected. This is the message. She is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maidservants. She considers a field and buys it. From her profits, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She, <laughs> yeah, I like having my nice strong arms too. I, I like that, um, uh, ability you have great ability when you're strong in your, in your vessel, in your body you can do um, much good see so she plant from her profits she plants a vineyard so she gets that little bit and she plants stuff, so the proliferation. Now it's like that wealth that just flows in on its own. Now you're just maintaining it and letting God do his thing, right? The, the vineyards, they grow the grapes. We don't have to do anything. We just got to make sure it's, you know, if it's a dry season or what, we got to make sure it's got the perfect amount of water and we're checking the sugar levels to know when to harvest. 
So, <clears throat> okay, we're she perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out by night. And the fact that she gets up early, okay, so she also rises while it is yet night. And provides food for her household so that you know the food that's the you can't do anything if you're hungry that's you're not okay so this is what mother is she's the food the nurturing the nourishment she makes everything prepared she prepares and that's what we do as 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 the mother, the goddess, the feminine, um, we have our hands kind of on everything about the household, you know, thinking about the future, about the right now, instant needs that need to be taken care of immediately, the immediate needs, and the future, the vineyard, okay, and then getting up before the sun even rises, because the daily things, you know, the goat needs to be fed, whatever, the milk, the goat, all that. She stretches out her hands to the distaff and her hand holds the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household. This is 31, this is the divine feminine, hello. She is not afraid of snow for her household for all her household is clothed with scarlet. She is not afraid of snow. For her household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. It's like they they have a constant fire burning. They're prepared for the winter. The cold the cold, harsh world. That's what winter is. No matter what, we're clothed with scarlet. We always have that fire burning for God. Our oil, our lamp never goes out. She's not a, okay, whoop, girl. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. Yeah, see that's what, see the, the scarlet, that they're, they're clothed with scarlet. Strength and honor, that's what that represents. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household. And that's what I was saying. She has her fingers on the pulse of everything that's going on. She's the overseer to make sure there, there's no lack anywhere. Uh, okay. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Meaning there, there's no nourishment in um, being stagnant. There's only nourishment in, in going forward, evolving, growing, keeping it going, keeping it alive, keeping that fire burning. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. <laughs> Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, right? But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. That's why I always say, like, get com get comfortable with ugly. You may be all cute and hot and everything now, but, you know, if you don't grow old grace gracefully, it's going to be a big dinger of a ding-dong. <laughs> um, you know, ding-dong ditch, the doorbell. Um, if you don't get comfortable with ugly, meaning release the 3D, 
and the tangible, you know, looks and all the, all the d fleshly desires and, um, you know, havoc and missteps that the flesh reaps on us. So that we allow, we allow for the influence. So I, I just love that. That's 3130. 3130 and 3131. These are the best ones. I've... Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. See, so when it comes to that, you know, when we pass, we go back home. It's like, we're doing it for God. We're allowing God to work through our vessel. But when we get there, it's like God's like, you, you did all this. You did it. Just by not being rebellious against God, you did it. Because you can rebel and reject God, but by allowing God to work through you and your spirit to guide you. You, you get the cred. You get the recognition. Because you didn't reject God or rebel against the truth. Your calling. So give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. You know, so when we get there, they want to, you know, we can call it judgment, whatever. It's not just like every little bad thing, we got to remember that. No, it's, we're going to get praise for all the good things we did too. But that's not why we do it for praise. Because we may not get any praise down here, but we got to keep trucking and keep doing, doing the thing right and getting her done. But our praise comes later. And that's the only praise I care about. Because one minute someone's all, oh, you're so great. And the next minute they're like, eh, I don't resonate with you. And, you know, so, and then they can come back and then go and waver. You know, God never wavers. So, you know... If we want praise from people down here, that's ego. I only want God's praise. That's the only praise that matters to me. I don't need accolades. So, yeah, I hope you all are enjoying beautiful time with your family, friends, and even if you're alone, seemingly, okay, just remember, God is always with us. The angels, the saints, the, our team, our, our guides, our ancestors, all the ancients, all the benevolence of the unified rainbow, the white light of God. It's always with you, protecting you, loving you, surrounding you, helping you. And sometimes that may be in the form of a trigger, okay? It's all happening for a reason. It's, it's for your betterment, for your spiritual growth. So that you can embody that righteous being, your perfect ethereal ether essence. Embody that in the flesh and ground those energies, bringing spirit into form through your vessel, using your words. How does it manifest in the 3D? Through our words, through how we dress, through how we live our lives, through who, what we eat, who we associate with. And I'm not talking about whether you eat meat or don't eat meat. I'm just saying, what kind of food is it healthy, good food? Um, is it nourishing? Is it balanced? You know, how, how our home is, is, is it clean? Is it organized? All these things, that's how we bring spirit into form. Cleanliness is clo close to godliness. These are how we ground those, the, mo the energy of the most high. Bring it through our vessel and express God in, in everything that you do. 
You can express God. You can see God in everything. And you can express God in everything that you do, say, think, feel. Be that divine golden light. I love you all. Happy Easter. Blessed be to all of you. I love you. Bless you. And peace be upon each and every one of you.